Hello and welcome to another video. More specifically, welcome to another reaction. I'm excited to check out The Thing, and that is the original Thing for the first time. So let's get through this intro and we'll get started. Welcome once again, my name is Austin, and this channel is all about helping you to dig deeper and go further to better understand faith and film and everything that's in between. If that's exciting to you, make sure you click that subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on any future content. Continuing with my yearly October series, in this week's video I'm going to be watching the original The Thing for the first time. Now this will be a really interesting reaction because I'm actually fairly familiar with almost not necessarily the franchise, but I guess the IP of The Thing, in that I've seen The Thing, the 2011 film with Mary Elizabeth Winstead, a number of times, and I actually quite like it. And so I've seen that one, and I know it is a prequel that leads into the original The Thing, so it's going to be interesting to kind of see my perspective coming in from seeing the prequel, more recent one, but not the classic. So it's going to be kind of an interesting kind of compare and contrast. So I'm interested with all of that. Now again, as I always say with my reactions, if you are unfamiliar with how I do reaction videos, I don't watch the movie live with you guys in the more traditional sense. I'm just not that kind of person when I watch movies, so I kind of give my thoughts before the movie, I watch the movie, then I come back and give my reaction afterwards and my thoughts, perspective, all that kind of stuff. So, what I do know about the original The Thing, I know it is one of John Carpenter's most beloved films. I know this movie stars Kurt Russell as kind of the main character of the film, and I know that kind of the setup for this movie, as far as the monster or the thing goes, is that it starts from this wild dog or wolf or something that gets in because I know in the The Thing prequel that the movie ends with the creature being taking the form of a dog. So I know kind of the, I guess you could say, anatomy of how this thing works, but I don't know any of like kind of the twists and turns along the way of the original movie of kind of who it starts with after the dog, where it goes beyond that. I know this movie is widely praised for its incredible practical effects. I'm familiar with the look of a lot of the monsters, just inherently with the popularity of this film. You see that stuff a lot in pop culture, and I'm very, very excited to check it out. I love practical effects when it comes to creatures and monsters and all that kind of stuff. I love seeing practical effect work. So I know I'm going to be thoroughly impressed with that aspect of the movie. I've heard the performances are pretty good too as far as Kurt Russell goes. I'm excited to see his performance in this character. As I said, a lot of the kind of information that I do know about it comes from that 2011 prequel movie. So excited to kind of compare the two together, see where the differences lie, and hopefully in the end have some great awesome thoughts to share with you guys about my thoughts on the movie. So without further ado, I'm going to grab some food, check out this movie, and I'll be back soon to share my thoughts on John Carpenter's The Thing. Welcome back. I just finished watching The Thing and really, really enjoyed it. I really liked it. I think it's going to be awesome to, in the future when I go back and watch this, I'll definitely be watching the 2011 prequel and then this one again. And I'm definitely, as much as it is a horror movie, I think I'll watch it in the dead of winter because it totally fits that vibe and kind of overall theme and mood. I very quickly picked up on kind of the setups that the 2011 prequel left where I know they set up certain elements as far as the ax in the wall and the one scene at the base they go to. Uh, the ice block all empty from the thing having emerged from it in the previous film, that kind of stuff. I picked up on a lot of that right away. I really liked the way that the two movies tied together and complement each other. 
Another thing I absolutely loved right away in this movie was the music. I thought the music was excellent. I meant to, before recording this video, look up if the music was done by John Carpenter. I'm pretty sure it is, uh, but I absolutely loved it. I thought it was great use of different instruments, sounds, to really add to the tension that's building throughout the movie. It did a great job, excellent one that I'm definitely going to check out on its own. And speaking of kind of setting the tone and the atmosphere, the practicality of the set pieces for this movie was awesome. It immediately made me want to check out and dive into the bonus features. Obviously, I haven't had a chance to yet. I literally just finished the movie to go back and record this video. So the bonus features are definitely something that I'm going to check out uh, in the future, hopefully soon, if not in subsequent rewatches. I can't wait to see kind of the behind the scenes stuff of how they put all the sets together to see where they actually filmed this of locations and stuff because it was very believable that they were actually in Antarctica with the sub-freezing temperatures and the frostbite. All that kind of stuff was excellently done and very well portrayed throughout the film. So I loved the set design that they went into for this movie too. And of course, for the aspect of the movie that this is most well known for and recognized for is its monster effects for the different The Thing versions as it attacks different beings, whether it's dogs and people, all that kind of stuff. So absolutely groundbreaking stuff. I can only imagine what it would have been like to see this stuff back in the early 80s when this movie came out. I thought it was phenomenally done and I totally definitely get the people who don't like the 2011 prequel because it opted for CGI over the practical stuff and when you compare the two it's a night and day difference of the you just don't get the same effect when it's done with CGI not that it was bad CGI most of the time when you see CGI, it's fairly obvious, and it doesn't necessarily take me out of the movie when watching the prequel one, but comparing the two so closely together, I obviously far prefer the practical stuff. It's incredible. I can only imagine the work that they went into designing these creatures, and not only just designing what they look like on the outside, but how they function on the inside for the movie's plot and story. That there's a lot of internals that have to happen as well that flow throughout each of the scenes to kind of evolve the creature throughout. And I think it's incredible the amount of work that you can clearly see went into designing these and it did a great job. They just don't make monster effects like this anymore and seeing that in this movie just made me miss those days all the more. Now one of the things I've come to love most about John Carpenter's movies, starting with when I saw Halloween for the first time last year, and then just a couple of months ago when I watched They Live for the first time, this is now the third John Carpenter movie that I've seen. Actually, no, I've seen Escape from New York as well. So this is the fourth John Carpenter movie I've seen. And what I love about his movies is kind of, maybe not necessarily the social commentary in all of his movies, but the themes that he focuses on throughout them. Because there's definitely social commentary there in a lot of them, but at the very least, he has some really interesting themes that he focuses on and different things to kind of study the human condition, society, how we behave in certain environments, all that kind of stuff. I think it's really interesting to watch him kind of weave those different themes and elements throughout his films and his stories. He does an amazing job with it. One of the things I found most intriguing about the thing creature is when they're talking about it when they're kind of first exposed to it in this movie you easily pick up on the fact that this thing could easily portray itself to be a friend that you would not know as an enemy. They speak often of it kind of camouflaging or masking itself in a disguise. And it takes time to get to that familiar form. So if you're not paying attention when it's going through that transformation, you'll miss the transformation and you're only going to see it as something that's familiar to you or something you recognize as a friend. When underneath of that facade is an enemy that has very bad intentions for you. And we see this time and time again throughout the movie of it turning these people against each other and going after you when you're alone and vulnerable. I, I immediately jump to different Bible stories and verses that I remember from scripture of the enemy being kind of like a wolf in sheep's clothing and disguising itself and getting to you when you're alone and vulnerable. And it was very reminiscent to me of remembering as us as not only Christians but even humanity we need to stick together and work together in order to succeed and do well in life and thrive. We are not meant to do life alone. We need to, just like the group in this movie, stick together, make sure we can trust each other, hold each other accountable, 
all those kinds of things. Because when we're alone, when we're vulnerable, that's when the enemy is going to come after us and target us. So I really, really appreciated those kinds of themes and plot elements that were really well weaved throughout this film. So those are my thoughts on the 1982 horror classic John Carpenter's The Thing. I'm so glad I finally had the chance to check this movie out. The new 4K transfer for this that just came out recently looks incredible. I will say, along with some of the other reviews out there, there are a couple minor issues that are... I say are minor, but are kind of more jarring than they should be. So my disc, just like a number of other people out there, did freeze at about the 126 mark for a few frames or so. And my 4K player every once in a while freezes up entirely on me. And it did freeze again towards the end of the movie. So I don't know if that was the disc or my player because it does that from time to time. I'm not really sure why, but overall the movie looks absolutely incredible on 4k so i highly recommend it for that i know there's some complaints out there about the audio track which i can understand but it didn't really bother me i thought the audio sounded really good and really great so overall i definitely recommend the 4k transfer for this one i haven't had a chance to delve into the special features as i mentioned yet but i'm sure the ones that are on there are great i know they're not as many as have been in some previous releases so if you're a collector or someone who absolutely adores this movie you'll want to keep that in mind but i love the movie i really enjoyed checking it out for the first time it looks great in 4k sounds really good a couple minor issues i hope universal addresses the freezing issue and maybe puts out some replacement discs just like a number of other people out there so i want to put that out there so that hopefully universal recognizes that there are some minor issues that need addressed in this but overall amazing experience absolutely loved it next week we're going to be wrapping up my october series it's going to be fairly straightforward of a blu-ray haul and a channel update going into november and kind of the rest of the year so i have some announcements and updates some exciting news that i want to bring to you guys so look forward to that coming next week to the channel thank you for sticking around to the end of this video as i kind of rambled on about my random thoughts wrapping things up i appreciate it i'll see you in the next video